Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Good evening. Thanks for tuning in to Cameras Rolling. Hey, happy May. So it's spring. What do we think about in the spring? We think of getting even more creative, we get out of the house. Well, have you been to a film festival, a local one lately? My two guests tonight will talk all about it. I personally can hardly wait to go. So without further ado, my guest is Shane Ingstrom, who's the director of the Connecticut LGBT Film Festival, and Mark Slit, who is the, on the board for the Connecticut LGBT Film Festival. Thank you for having us. Yay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Okay, so this is the 30th year you told me, which is really yes. exciting because I said, who knew? I know. 30 <laughs> years. We get that a lot. <laughs> there's, there's been an LGBT film festival. Okay, so tell me where it is. Tell me what, when it is this year, 2017. Sure, to your point. Um, it is Connecticut's longest running film festival. Um, it is in Hartford. Uh, primarily on the campus of Trinity College at Cine Studio, um, but over the years we've expanded to some other venues as well, um, and we'll have our closing night um, festivities, the, the films and the closing night party in downtown Hartford at the Spotlight Theaters as well as the Wadsworth Athenaeum. Nice. So. And when? Uh, it is June 2nd through the 10th. June 2nd so through the 10th. It starts on a Friday the 2nd and it goes through the t Saturday the 10th and but it's uh, the weekend after Memorial Day weekend. Okay yeah that's that's a great way to remember it. So can they can they go to website and yep. get more information? Now when when they go to the website they can see what's being done on that particular day right? Yes and we'll probably be launching the website um, in the first week or two of, of May um, but it's it's at www.outfilmct.org okay. and you'll be able to get tickets there and watch video clips and um, and read all about the the different films right and and is it like um, those those fun things where they have the the panel at the end and and the, they can ask the a, the um, actors questions and the director will say this was my image, this was my homage <laughs> to, you know, film noir, that type of thing. Yeah, yes, I love exactly. that stuff. I love that stuff. And I had no idea it was here. <laughs> that's, that's the thing about a film festival like ours is yeah. we do as much of that as humanly possible. Right. We try to, we reach out to all the filmmakers and see if they're available to come in and do a Q&A with the audience. We try to get actors to come, et cetera. So, that's in the in the works now. I can't like name any names yet, but we are in discussions with with many different filmmakers and actors. Oh, that's nice. So. so, Mark, how long have you been involved in this? I think this is my seventh season. Your seventh season. Yep. And what what do you do as being on the board? What's your? Well, I'm one of several people who, well, as part part of the board, I have a leadership role within the organization. So, um, but I'm also one of many people on the committee that. Um, that picks the, the, the movies that, that we show. So we, have a, okay. we have a committee of, 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 a, of a, a numerous people that mm -hmm. watch week after week after week, starting probably in September, going through early a April, uh, watching movies. And we can also watch them at home, but we get together weekly um, as well. And we, we, we screen them and, and we, we rate them uh, on a scale of one to five as to you know, how well we like them. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to decision time, we look at those collective scores and make decisions about what to show. It's not just based on the scores, there's a lot of back and forth. Right, right, there's a lot of discussion. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of different viewpoints in you. Well, now, d does it need to be a gay themed film? 
Yeah, that, okay. is, that is one of our you know, primary criteria. It does need to have at least some LGBT content. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that is something we look for. Okay. Yeah, including the T, and sometimes the T gets overlooked. So we yeah. are very committed to showing uh, transgender films, both uh, full-length films as well as in, within the shorts programs. Right. Uh, we try to cover the L, the G, the B, and the T as, right. as best we can. And we do show uh, like a big mix of feature films, documentaries, as well as short films. And we try to, we try to intersperse a lot of the short films uh, throughout, throughout all the programs. So, so you might, it's kind of, you know, a throwback to the old days where you might see a little short film or, or an animated film before you see the feature. We do, we do a lot of that. Oh, that's fun. As well as we've started on Monday and Tuesday nights, um, we're going to be showing nights of all shorts. So we have kind of a men's shorts night and a women's shorts night. Oh, okay. Which has been very popular over the last couple of years. Can you, can you wear shorts for the women's shorts? You can. Night? Wouldn't if, that be fun? Yeah. It, <laughs> It, we're fortunate to have the festival in the summertime when the weather is right. usually yes. warm, although we've been surprised a few times where it's turned quite chilly. But if you want to wear shorts, you can pretty much <laughs> wear whatever you. you want to our Thank festival. Thank you very, very much. Casual, I yeah, very casual. appreciate that. Very user friendly. So. so now, so when people submit their films, it, do you put any um, special weight on, on local filmmakers or are, are they all across the country? Uh, they come from actually all over the world. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Really? But, but and I would have to say that you know probably at least fifty percent of the films that we receive are from other countries, um, but we do always keep a close eye out for for local filmmakers. Uh, we don't always have submissions from locally, but we're always kind of looking looking out for kind of a local connection, um, and we do have a few connections this year, and and I'm still learning about more, but we have a short film that was. Uh, made by someone who went to Wesleyan University, and um, and one of the filmmakers, her sister lives in Hartford, so she's thinking oh, of coming fun. in for yeah. the, you know, we'll be flying her in from Los Angeles, and um, she'll get to spend the weekend with her sister. <laughs> that, well, that'll be fun for them. It'll be fun for us, because I, I really think it's great for people to, to go there and see the movie, and then see the people involved in the movie. It really is a terrific experience when when our guests at the festival can interact with the producers, the directors, the writers, the actors. Um, and we have an opening night party and a closing night party, and very often at those parties we'll have uh, people from who've been involved in the films. And it just makes it fun where you can uh, mingle and, and, and chat with the people who made the movies. Right. So not just in the formal Q&A that they have after, the, after the, the film itself, but also in a more social in environment where you can really get, get, get close to, to people and talk to them and, yeah. and really interact with them. It's a, it's a lot of fun, and people really enjoy that about our festival. Well, and one, one of the things that I love, and especially about my viewers, is that they love to go out and try new things and learn new things. That's and I, I would think because um, this is always a timely subject, and that people meet, need more sensitivity and need to be more aware of that we all have our own struggles. Yeah. Right? Well, we have a, a ton of different films on lots of different subjects and, you know, they should, a lot of them have a lot of broad appeal. So, uh, you know, we encourage everyone to come. It's not just for the LGBT community. It's for Right. You don't have to be allies. LGB or T to enjoy the movies. <laughs> right. they're really, these are really good movies that tell interesting stories, and the documentaries tell very important uh, stories about uh, history and about culture, and they can be enjoyed by anybody. Right, right. So tell me, uh, tell me about some of your, your movies that are this year. Sure. Um, all right, so we are going to be showing... On the first Saturday of the festival, mm -hmm. it's it's kind of it's going to be kind of an Irish theme because we have a couple we have a couple Irish uh, features this year that we that are probably going to be crowd pleasers. Uh, one of them is called Handsome Devil, and it's it's a it's a nice little coming out story about uh, a kid who goes off to um, goes off to boarding school, and he's psyched because he gets his own room only later to discover that um, the dean has a late late entry student comes in who's a rugby star and he forces him to room with him and so um, you know one one of the kids is just you know picked on and the other is a superstar sporting athlete and 
and it's all about the their you know building a friendship and and it leads to more oh that sounds wonderful now is that one of the ones we have a clip of yeah and mm -hmm. what's the name of it again handsome devil handsome devil and it's from ireland yes. from ireland and we're going to be giving out lucky charms that night <laughs> <laughs> And well, I'll be little Lucky Charm seeing it. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at that clip. Everyone at Woodhill College was obsessed with rugby. And I didn't hate rugby, but what happened if you didn't love it? <laughs> Legally, you guys shouldn't be able to force me to go to school. So you're sending me to jail. Prisoners make an effort to fit in. They do jigsaws together. You are an utter bender. And hello to you too, Weasel. Everyone, this is Connor. I told you I left your old school for repeated and persistent fighting. I can't share with a guy like him. My decision is final. What's with the Berlin Wall? Yeah, you see, he's a rugby player, so believe me, my friendship would be a hindrance. It's quite a persecution complex you're going on, man. Thank you. Now Whoa, show me that. How do you know, Court? I can't like music, you know. We're not all the same. I have one more present for you, actually. Have a good birthday. Hey, can I ask you something? Why are you hanging out with that freak Ned? Tell them, Connor. You afraid to be hit? Oh. From now on, men, it's a war zone, and you're in the army. Stop! Stop! You spend your whole life being someone else. Who's going to be you? There is one coach on this team. One voice, not 15. We always play with honor. Sing it, little queer. Everyone who's ever been young, so that's everyone ever, knows just what humiliation feels like. Reveal to me who you are, you dare. Ah! We were friends, and I wasn't going to give that up without a fight. But out of that Bin Kennedy and cease your egregious play acting. Yes, sir, because it's all my fault. Apology accepted. All right, that was great. That was just wonderful. I know that the audience is just going to love this. Good. I mean, it really, really resonates into people's heart. Good. So, all right, so now I have some more questions. One of the things that I always preach is it's never too late to go for your dreams. It's, you're, you're never too old. You're, you know, you can never give up hope. So, uh, like, I like to tell people who watch that they can really learn new skills. Now, would you think that this would be a great environment that they can network with other people and learn about filmmaking and learn about writing movies? Would, would it be conducive to that? Oh, definitely. I mean, I think this year we're going to have probably six or seven different directors there that they could actually talk to, either ask questions during the Q&A or they they always hang out after the after the films as well and and people approach them and i've i've seen in the past people say you know how did you get your start and how how would i go about doing something like that oh perfect so so it's a great way to network and to and to get some advice from the people who've made it their careers and and also don't don't you find mark that it's just it's wonderful to be in a creative supportive environment Absolutely. where where everybody feels safe to be themselves Absolutely. I think that that's really important. And that's what the festival's about. It, it's, it's, it's a, it is a safe environment. It's a fun environment. People are there because they want to have a good time and wa watch good movies, interesting films, um, and enjoy um, everybody's company. And that's why we, we stress things like our opening and closing night party. We have a, a reception during the middle of the week called, for what we call the centerpiece film. So there's a lot of social activity built in as well. Uh, as as um, watching the movies. Okay, yeah. so so okay, you just mentioned there's something called a centerpiece film. So do you look for different types of like say you want one to be the the feature, one to be more maudlin, the other one to be a comedy. Do you, do you like to mix it up that way? Yeah, we do, and that's part of the whole like process of like picking the lineup. Is, right, is really talking about all those different elements and what what things do we want to showcase. Usually on opening, closing night, you want to pick films that, you know, you think the audience will go away from, like, in an upbeat tone so they can just, like, go right into the party and, and right. have, a, have a great night. Um, we also look for is what kind of a broad appeal would this one have? If it's, a, if it's a centerpiece film, would it appeal to men and women and and everyone in general? Uh, so, 
So there's a lot of kind of back and forth. Yeah. And also a balance of, of English language films and foreign language films, because we were talking earlier uh, before our, this conversation started, mm -hmm. that uh, some people don't like to watch movies that are subtitled. And so we keep that in mind as well. And sometimes we have just a large number of really, really terrific films, and they're all foreign language. And so then we have to make some choices where the decision isn't just based on the ratings. We have to say, well, you know what, we can't have five foreign language films because people right. aren't going to come. They're just not going to watch that many. So then we have to balance out the program with the English and, and foreign language and, and, and based on you know, comedy and, and drama. And, right. and, and we always have a certain number of men's films, women's films, um, documentaries. Uh, so there's a lot of horse training on selection night. Uh, it can be a brutal experience. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> but I swear. Negotiate. <laughs> but a lot I, of negotiation. Yeah. yeah. But I swear, some of the best films we show are, are made in other countries yeah. and just wonderful storylines. So I wish that people would really just, you know, you, you after you read a couple lines, you forget that you're reading. And right. it's really all about the story. Well, and, that, and that's one of the things that I love about it being themed, the LGBT. Because, for instance, and I'm just going to say this because I know it's been in the news, whether it's fake news or not, but it is fascinating when we hear the horrible stories about how gays are, are being treated overseas, especially Russia. Chechnya. Yeah, yeah Chechnya. So, um, I think that it would be so fascinating to, to see how they are treated in other cultures, especially where they really do need to stay closeted. Yeah, and that's an interesting point. And we see a number of documentaries exactly like that. Then the question becomes, do people who go to a festival, and n note that the root word of festival is festive, yeah. you know, they want it to be somewhat upbeat. And yeah, you, want, you can have serious movies, and you can have dramas, and you can have tra you know, tragedies. You know. But people really don't necessarily want to see a 90-minute documentary about how awful and brutal life is in some far remote part of the world. Now, whether that's good or bad or right or wrong, you know, that's, that's another issue. But that's one of the realities we have to face when we're, when we're making decisions right. about programming. Is this something that people are going to want to come out and watch? Yes, it's important. Yes, it's telling a, a story that people really should know about and understand. Yes, it has important information to convey. But are people going to come and watch it? And so we always have to balance that because we want people to come out right. and see the films. But a nice thing, too, is we're able to intersperse. We get a lot of short films, mm -hmm. and we're able to intersperse some of those different subjects into a, a mm -hmm. program where someone might come out to see, like, the romantic comedy. Mm -hmm. But we also throw in a, a this year we have a, a short film about a Syrian refugee. And, you Talk know. Talk about timely. Yes, <laughs> very much. About coming out in that community <coughs> and me. so it's it's you know there are some very oh and there's one moments. other short that's very powerful it was i believe it's set in pakistan and these two young men are coming home from a party or from some social activity they're driving down the street and they're stopped by the police and they're being harassed by the police and and they're trying the police are trying to shame them and, right. and and abuse them and then the mother of one of the young men comes and basically reads the riot act to the police and totally shames the police. And it's, about, it's a very powerful story told in just a few minutes about this woman standing up for her son in, an, in, a, in a country that is, is very homophobic and, and very conservative. And it's a very, very powerful film. So we do get those opportunities in the shorter films to show those kinds of stories that right. are really terrific. Uh, if you can tell that powerful a, a story in, in, a, in a small amount of space of time, um, you, you know, you're really doing a great job. Well, and what, one of the things that I love, because like, for instance, I'm, I'm a big History Channel buff, is you were, you were telling me about um, the, the other clip that we're going to see called, what's it, Lavender? The Lavender Scare. Yeah. Could, yeah. could you explain some of that to me? Sure. The Lavender Scare tells a story that I wasn't familiar with and many people on the committee weren't familiar with either. Um, it's a documentary about the Eisenhower administration and how the, and how the administration went after gays and lesbians in government service. Now, we all read about and know about the McCarthy era and the purging of so-called communists or purported communists in the State Department, of which there turned out to not be very many. But there were a lot of gay men and lesbians who, were, who worked in the federal government who lost their jobs and who were persecuted uh, uh, at, at a period of time uh, that, and we don't really know about that. So this is a really um, powerful story and that sheds light on a very dark chapter in American history that really not too many people right, are aware of. Right, right. Well, and especially Eisenhower because yeah. everybody thinks of, of him. Big, as I like Ike, and you know, he yeah, was a war exactly, hero. He, yes. he basically, you know, led us to victory in World War exactly, II. Exactly. Yeah. And um, and you he know, was beloved. Anti-Nazi. Yeah. And, great, and, and, great. And then it turned out well, you know, and, and he, you know, he was sort of a grandfatherly grandfatherly figure, and he. Played 
played golf and who didn't like Ike? Right. Well, but Ike didn't really particularly care for, for gay men and lesbians. He, and we're not even sure if it was him. Tolerant. We're not even sure if it was him acting from a from a sense of animus or it was just it was the times and 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 he was led to that. Right. Um, and uh, it, it really it, it's a chilling story, and it also has uh, some implications for modern times when we see in the current political uh, environment where there's a backlash against immigrants, against uh, gay men and lesbians, against mm -hmm. transgender people, against Jews, against Muslims, against anybody that's perceived as different. different. So showing this movie now, even though it's about a chapter, you know, 50, 60 years ago, it really, you know, has, has relevance to the times that we're living in now. Yeah. It's a really terrific documentary. Yeah. Well, have you noticed, uh, um, like, say, back in the 80s, well, of course, you're you're so young, Shane. But you know, it was it <laughs> well, not me. I'm <laughs> no, you're I'm an old geezer. So. <laughs> but, I remember um, the '80s. Yeah. But is there a more um, l like a more com complacent ad attitude now? Because there, there there's the big AIDS scare, and people were very afraid. Have have have, have people become a little bit more complacent now? Um, I don't know what I would call it complacency, but I think that there's been a real shift in the way that people interact and it's right and so it's become more mainstream so which is good which is good yes. but it's also a challenge when you're trying to put on an lgbt event to make sure that the whole community comes together which is really important to us um you know i don't want to bring the conversation down but on our closing night last year was the night of the orlando uh the pulse it was? shooting and yeah so well, we were dancing and having fun that was going on. That was so I just got it, chills. It, it's I really, can't it's really believe chilling. that was your closing. Yeah, yeah, that because yeah. that was yeah, so we devastating. All, we all Still home, devastating. We all went home from a real high from the party, right? And then we woke up in the morning and we opened up the newspapers to turn on the television and horrified at what had happened. But it just wow. goes to you know show how important it is to provide a safe space for the community to come together and enjoy, you know, films and right. and enjoy each other's company. Okay. Oh, and let's see um, a clip of lavender. Sure. Say it again for me. I keep Lavender it. Scare. Lavender Scare. I want to say Sky. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking of Vanilla <laughs> Sky. <Yeah. laughs> Lavender Sky. Okay, let's take a look at a clip. We have your friend in the next room. She's already told us that you're gay. You give us the names of others and we'll go easier on you. Somebody will please come to order. Homosexuals must not be handling top secret material. The pervert is easy prey to the blackmailer. It started this lavender scare. It started this systematic campaign to identify and remove all suspected gay men and lesbians from the federal civil service. It was the most wonderful country in the world, and you should serve it. And then I found out they didn't want me. I was called to the FBI office. They wouldn't allow legal representation. I was a scared kid. They wouldn't reveal the evidence. They said, we have information, you are homosexual. Do you have any comment? And they would threaten exposure. I submitted my resignation. I lost my job at the patent office. That was the end of it, I would have. The people that I got rid of, they were faggots. I didn't give a hoot. Get rid of that son of a bitch. Put them on the bread line. Culturally, we were sick, sinners, sexual perverts. We were worse than communists. We knew that. He was afraid he was under investigation for his homosexuality. He was just not able to cope. And they said, well, he committed suicide. My mom, she was out there crying her heart out. How do you deal with that? I was the first person to fight back out of all of those large, huge number of people that were fired in the 50s. And in 1965, he led a protest outside the White House, which was both an act of conscience, but also an act of extraordinary courage. He has had more impact on moving forward gay civil rights than any other single individual. We are proud of you, Frank, and we are grateful to you. Oh, 
mean, it, it's, a, it's a heartache that you have the rest of your days. All of this needs to be said. People need to know. Wow, that was really moving. Thanks. That was fantastic. Okay, so I want to ask some more questions. Um, let's let's talk about you personally a little bit. Now, I, were you born and raised here? I was born and raised in the state of Maine. In the state of Maine. But I moved here about 20 years ago, 20, 20, 25 years ago. And have you always been involved in films or had a creative I um, always, fire spirit in you? <laughs> I always enjoyed independent film um, from way back when, but but when I, I was kind of a late bloomer coming out of the closet, and I wanted to. What what is late? I was thirty when I oh, came out. Oh, I guess out. that is late. Yeah. So, so it provided for me getting involved with the film festival was a way for me to like meet meet other people mm -hmm. in a non bar setting. So that's why I got involved, and um, and it's worked out really well. Yeah. Wow. And what what about you, Mark? I was born and raised in West Hartford. Went to Hall High. Really? I did. And, um, Boo! My, my, my kids went to Connor. Yeah. Well, my brother and sister went to Connor. Okay. I went to the new hall when it first opened. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, stayed in Connecticut to go to college. I, w I went to Wesleyan. I studied film under the great Janine Basinger at, at Wesleyan. And, uh, and then after college, I moved away because I didn't want to live in Hartford and work for, for an insurance company. Right. <laughs> 30 years later, I came back to do that, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> but I was always interested in film. I, I, I did study it in college. I always went to the movies a lot. In fact, when I was in high school and, and, um, and college, I went to Cine Studio, where we hold our, our film festival. I went to Cine Studio uh, all the time, uh, back, right. back in the day when Cine Studio was just, was just starting. Yeah. So I've always loved movies. Um, and, um, and so when I had the opportunity to join the festival, uh, I jumped right on. Oh. I, I, I really enjoy it. It's a labor of love. It's a lot, it's a lot of work. Lord. It's a lot of watching. We, I always tell people, we watch all the junk so that you don't have to. Right. Because we watch a lot of movies throughout the year, and they're not all good. So. <laughs> yeah. We watched over 400 films this year. 400. Okay, yeah, because I also heard you say briefly, so they start to submit, uh, what's that, September of 2015 well, to April of this year? We've already started receiving films for next year. Really? <laughs> because they really come in, they roll, roll in year round. Um, but we really start, start ramping up and, and getting a lot more submissions in the fall, probably in the September, October range. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we watch a ton of movies. Um, and like you said, <laughs> you know, we watch the bad ones. You yeah, have to. right. <laughs> Okay, so again, uh, what website do they go to to get the information? It's out, O-U-T, film, F-I-L-M-C-T, dot O-R-G. Okay, and they'll, they'll learn about like the, the little things like parking. Yep, parking, tickets. If uh, there's food or, you know. Food, events, uh, different, different things that we have going on. So. Okay, perfect. So uh, did, tell me about just a, a, a few more films that you got. I'm so excited to hear the, the different variety. Okay, sure. so what is the next clip? Uh, the next clip is A Date for, a Mad, date Mary. for Mad Mary. A Date for Mad yes. Mary. Yes, Mad Mary is, um, she's not the nicest person on earth. Well, she, yeah, with a name like <laughs> that, I'm, I'm rather, not a big she's, she's, she's a um, sweetheart. She's not a sweetheart. She's <laughs> kind of mean and angry a lot, and uh, she has a best friend that she's been hanging out for a long time, and the best friend is getting married. And there's some reluctance whether to invite Mary to how much she's going to be involved in her best friend's wedding because, and then it's a, there's a question about will they invite her to bring a plus one because they don't think that Mary can get a date because Mary has issues with everybody about everything. Um, and so the whole story. Is she, is she related to me? I'm just I, I, I think she could be your cousin. <laughs> I've got to say she sounds so familiar. So, or, or me when I when, when you I were had younger. a few cocktails. So, yeah. Yeah. So the story it is a comedy. Just it is a comedy. Okay. I have to say it is comedy, and it, it's fun. It's very entertaining. Right. But you know, and and we probably all know a Mary in our lives, and sometimes yes. we've all been a Mary at, 
to some degree in yes. our lives. Well, we're not always the most charming and, and the nicest that we can possibly be. Yes. Um, so the story revolves around her trying to find, to defy her best friend, or to find a date to bring to the wedding as her plus one. And she goes through a hysterical series of, of bad dates with, with men. And then finally she comes to the conclusion, well, maybe it's not really a man I should be bringing as my plus one, and I'm just going to leave it there. Oh. <laughs> so. Do you want to go on a date sometime? What? A date. What are you on about? This train is having all stations to drive. All stations to drive. Hey. Hey. Henry best mate. Mischief. I hope I might even get a plus one. Because a place of like 60 quid. I wouldn't worry about her turning up with a fella. Chance to be a fine thing. I think I'd get a fella quicker than you, Leona. Mary. It's exciting, isn't it? No. How do I look? Like a whore. I believe you're looking to find someone to go to a wedding. I met a fella. Oh, what's his name? John. John Carter. From Mars. <laughs> you're going on all these days to strangers to find someone to bring to a wedding? Yeah. Not because you want to meet someone. No. You're my boyfriend, your name is John. Hello. Charlie, and this is John Carter, the chap I was telling you about. What? I don't think I'm very good at meeting people, dating, all that. You're making a show of yourself. Well, what's new, Charlene? Mary! Get off your high horse or you will end up being very lonely here. Do you have any idea what you put is true? Say that again. Me, your ma, all of us. You're still a mess. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> I keep hurting people and I don't know why. Any interest in going to a wedding? Well, I'm, so it is, I'm really it is excited fun. to go. It yeah. Is fun. Well, and also I was going to say, Mark. So if this has been here for thirty years, did you? Uh, when? When? When did you come out? I mean, did you go to this when you were young? No, because it didn't. Thank you for thinking I'm that young. But <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, when I was growing oh, up yeah. here, oh, when yeah, I was growing well, here, it didn't exist. And, yeah, I and, am uh, challenged in math. Yeah, and, okay. yeah. <laughs> and when I moved back right. and I, I saw the Jewish Film Festival. In fact, I was involved with the Jewish Film Festival for a couple of years, mm -hmm. and then I discovered. Uh, much to my, my 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 great joy, that there was this mm -hmm. gay and lesbian film festival in in Hartford, Connecticut, of all places, and so I started to go to it. And then I contacted Shane and said, "I'd really like to be a part of this. Do you do you need any help? Do you, are you looking for people to?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the answer is yes <laughs> at all times. At all times. <laughs> so everyone's yeah. welcome. Yeah, Wonderful. but, I, I, but yeah. I wish there was something like this, you know, back when I was when I was coming out when I was in my teens and twenties, because right. I think something like this really does provide um, a, a place for, and, and we do see younger people come sometimes, and you can tell when it's sort of their first time yeah. at something like this, and they're a little bit hesitant, and it's really great that we have this venue and this opportunity to, to give to younger people who are trying to, you know, to figure out where they are in the world and to understand that it's okay to be gay or lesbian or, or trans or, or, or whatever they, they, right. they are. Yeah. Right. Um, and so I, I wish there was something like this when I was young. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, one one of the things that I that I love about well, you know, my 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 best friends are gay. My 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 cousin's gay, who's my best friend, and and also because I'm an actress, that's I I don't think if anyone's an award-winning actress. Oh yes, award-winning. <laughs> Hello, but um, but I I don't think in terms of gay and straight. I just think in terms of great film. Hmm. But I am. Yeah. And we hope more people think that way right. and they come out to see these movies. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, so again, they, they can go to your website. Yep, outfilmct.org. Okay, it, is, is there a number that they can call or they'll, they'll, they'll just get it all from there? They can get it primarily from the website. We have a number, but <laughs> okay. Well, well, they'll they'll see it. They'll on the find website. it on the website. And and now, also, and they don't have to buy tickets in advance. People can just show up at the door, and then they can get it yeah, that way. Yeah. The only time that it, that could be an issue is on closing night when you know it, that's really big turnout. Um, but if people can can on a whim decide, gee, you know what, I'd like to go to a men's shorts night, or I'd like to go to the centerpiece tonight, come on down. Uh, to the box office. I, I'm usually working the box office. I'll be happy to sell oh, you a ticket. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wonderful. And like, like I said, it's never too late to go for your dreams. Some it, one of the great things about today is that people can film really great movies with really quality movies, even with their yeah. cell phones. Sometimes. Yeah. When I mean, with with all the, the the graphics and green screen and all that. I will say sometimes because because yeah. <laughs> we've seen <laughs> a lot. Remember we talked about the bad films. Right. We've watched a lot of them are basically done. 
But well, I'm but I'm I'm thinking of somebody who who may be aspire when right. when they go there. Yes. I, I think that'll be a great experience, and also knowing that that they're not alone is really important yes yeah. so i will see you guys there i hope all of you guys go out to the film festival the connecticut lgbt film festival june second through the 10th second through the 10th i'll see you there thanks guys thank you thank you, thank you.